Hi learners, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to see the new topic that is the algebraic expressions and identities. This is one of the most important topic. So now let us see the part one of it. So I have given the rough introduction of this topic is given here. So what is an algebraic expression? So algebraic expression is a, that is a combination of, that is called the constant. I'm going to explain what is constant later and the variables connected by the signs of operations like it is connect. This is plus minus division or multiplication. Suppose now if I write it to x plus three y plus five. Now this is connected with what? Plus. If I put here 2x plus 3y minus 5, again, this is plus and this is minus. It can be division and multiplication also. And these are called the terms. So before whatever this is one term, after this will be one term and after this is going to be one term, but it is connected with plus minus or it will be division or multiplication. So they are said connected by the signs of operations like plus minus division and multiplication. And constant means, here I'll give you the constant or I'll again written over here. So let me explain what is the constant. So here the constant means a number which is without a variable. So these are the variables. So variables means these variables can be from A to Z, any alphabet it can be. So these are called the variables. And this two, now this is X. So whenever we say this will be two is the coefficient of x we can say when we say 2x so that is going to be 2 is the coefficient of x hope you got this and this 5 is without any variable so that is called a constant so now you know what is the term so here there are three terms this is the 2 is the coefficient of x 3 is the coefficient of y and this 5 is a constant and the algebraic expressions separated by plus or minus signs, these are called the terms of the expression. So now let us see the classification of algebraic expressions. So now if you see a word monomial, mono means what? One. So the expression which is containing one term, I have told you now what is the term. So if it has only one term, it is called a monomial. Now this is a this has only one term. So these are the monomials. Binomial by means two. Expression containing two, but they are they should not be like terms. They should be unlike. They are called the that is called a binomial. This will be so now see here. This is with x and this is with y. So these are the two terms. So they are called the binomial. Again, here you can see there are two terms. So this is a binomial. So unlike is important. If both are suppose x. So this is not a binomial. Even there are two terms, but both are x. So it is not a binomial. And the trinomial, tri means three. An expression containing three, these also should be unlike. This is called a trinomial. So now can you see this? These are three terms there. So this is called a trinomial. And one more thing here, what is a polynomial? So algebraic expression that has one or more terms with non-zero coefficient. And as variables having non-negative exponents is called a polynomial. Suppose now this is a expression. So this is a polynomial because we should have a non-negative exponent. And here now can you see 7x square plus 3 by 2y plus 5. So if we take this variable in the numerator, so this is going to be negative. So this is not a polynomial. It should be non-negative. But this is going to be negative. This 2y, if we, this y, if we take it, it is going to be minus y raised to minus 1. So this should not be negative. So it's not a polynomial. So we are going to see the examples. This is just a single example given over here. And then again, we, can, we should know what is the degree of a polynomial. So degree of a polynomial, then we should the highest power of the variable. Suppose now here 2x squared plus it will be 3 by cube. So the highest power here, this is the power. So this is the, if you say that is the power is 4. So again, we are going to see the examples based on this one. So it is the highest power of the variable. So whatever the 
this we have the variable is this is the variable so we have to see the power of it so now let us see the inning 6.1 here they have said write the terms and the numerical coefficients for each of the following you should know the terms so this is given so which are the terms here how many terms do we have we have two terms so we have to write the two, two terms but then we have to write along with the sign so we have to look at the previous sign what is given so terms will be this will be 66x and this is going to be minus 3y so these are the terms and the coefficient as i said earlier that now suppose we take this one the coefficient of this is x the coefficient of this is 66 and if we take this part so we can also see here then it will be more better so the coefficient of this is 66 and coefficient of this should be minus 3 so here again see the how many terms do you have this one this one and this one so there are along with the sign this this and this and put a comma because we are mentioning the terms and the coefficient of this is going to be 2.5 this will be along with the sign that is minus 1.7 and of this is going to be 0 0.9 now again here this is one term and this is one term so plus we don't usually write plus so that is understood but there is a plus over here so this comma is important when you are mentioning the terms and then the coefficient of this one will be minus 5 this is going to be 3 uh, now again here this is one term, this is the other term, and this is the third one. So it is separated by commas. So we have three terms, and coefficient of this is going to be, see, there is nothing over here, but there is one. Because see, when we write here 5, that means it is going to be 1 into 5. But we usually don't write 1. So but when they ask for the coefficient, you have to mention that 1. So this is 1. This will be minus 1. And this is not a coefficient, because coefficient means there should be a variable along with it. This is a constant one. So, when you have to think about this and this one, this is a constant term. This is a constant term. So, there is no coefficient of the constant term. Because coefficient means it is always a number that is the coefficient of the variable. So, now here again 1, 2, 3 and 4. This is 1, 2, 3, 4 separated by the commas. So for this one now, the coefficient is minus 1. Again for this is minus 1. Again for this is minus 1. And this is, sorry, this will be, there is no coefficient for this one. So we don't have to write this 7. So now here, phi by 4 x square y minus 3 by 2 x y square. So this is one term and this is the other term. So separated for this one, the coefficient is 5 by 4 minus 3 by 2. So now here, write the coefficient of x square in the following expression. So here, everywhere you don't see x square. So we don't have to think about this. We don't have to think about this, but here it is. So coefficient of x square means you don't have to consider x square. Apart from that, whatever is there, that will be minus 7 and y as well. So, because they have asked the coefficient of x squared. So, you have to mention this y as well. Now, here, so here is, we have x squared and x, because this is x cubed, that will be x squared into x. So, definitely, we are going to think about this one, but not of this part. So, one, one minus 112 and x squared into x. So, we are not going to consider x squared, only this x is remaining. So, we are going to mention that x alone. This is very important step. Now here, again here, what we can see, we don't have to think about this because we don't have x squared here. Now we are going to think about this term. So x squared, we are not going to think about x squared, but minus z. So minus z is the coefficient of x squared. Now look at here, this is a bit different. So here is x squared. Here we don't have x squared. We don't have x squared. Again, here we have x squared. So what will be that minus x squared plus 2x squared? So this is going to be what? Minus 9x squared because minus 11 plus 2 because these both are x squared. So that is going to be minus 9x squared. So we don't have to consider this x squared because they were asked for the x squared. So only the coefficient of that is going to be minus 9. So this is also one of the important problems. So now see here, we have to consider this and this along with the sign. And then you have to subtract it. Identify the like terms. You know the like means same. 
in the following expression. So now what you can see here, here this is also a square b and see here this also is b a square means it is only the order is changed. It is a square b. If you write 1 into 5, that also is 5. If you write 5 into 1, that also is 5. So in multiplication, you can write other either way. So these are the like terms. So see the like terms I have written over here, this and this one. So this is the first part. And now what you can see plus a and plus 12a. So we don't have to write that plus. So these also the like terms. So I have written on a separate and otherwise you can also put a comma over here. And this part you can write it over here. So now here first we'll go for the x part. This x and this well, the minus 7x. This is one of the like part. Then you will go for 47 and minus 7. This is without a variable the constant. This is also like term. Now you will see for this yz and this is zy. As I said earlier, either yz or zy. Both is the same. But you have to write along with the sign because minus is a very dangerous sign. So now we have to think along with the sign of negative. So this is important. Wherever the negative signs you have before the variables, any number. So that should be taken together. So many of them miss this negative. They, they write just that way. That is wrong. So be careful with the negative sign. So yz and minus zy. 161xy plus 15x square minus 13 yx. So now what you can see here, xy and yx, both are the same. So along with the sign again. And this is alone, so we don't have to consider because there is no other like term. So only this two, you have to write it over here. Now here, they said classify the following as monomial, binomial and trinomial. So mono means one, bi means two and tri means three. So we have to look with one term, two terms and three terms. So now you can see this is only single, so it is a monomial. But you have to write that what is mono, that is whether it's monomial, binomial, or trinomial. Now here you can see there are three terms because that is separated with a plus sign. So one, two, and three. So that will be trinomial. Again, here you can see. So actually, this should be a sorry, this also is a square, and this also is a square. So it should be. There are three terms, but then you can see it should be a binomial because here also you can see a square and this also is a square means it will be 84 a square. This will be plus minus 11 a square. So this is going to be when you solve it that is going to be 73 a square. So this is one term and this is the other term. So that should be a binomial. Now again here, this also there are two terms, so it should be a binomial. Uh, now look at here, again here what you can see, you can see four, but here this is also x square and this is also x square. So what you can see here, this x square and uh, x y, sorry, this is x y and this also is x y. So now what will be that 15 x y minus 3 x y, this should be plus. So that is going to be 12 x y. So this should be considered, this two should be considered as one and then two and then three. So it should be a trinomial. So hope this is clear. And this is just single. So it is a monomial. So be careful with this one and this one. Now identify which of the following expressions are polynomials. Now you should know the rule for the polynomial. To determine if an expression is a polynomial, it must satisfy the following conditions. So what are the conditions? The variables in the expression must have non-negative exponents. It should not be negative one. And the expression must not involve division by a variable. I, I'll show you with the example later. What is that? It should not involve division by a variable. And it should have non-zero coefficient. So non-zero coefficient means the coefficient should not be zero. So now look at here. Now they have asked which of them are polynomials. Now here you can see this satisfies the condition. So this is a which I put a tick mark that is a polynomial. Here also it satisfies the, this one because now see when we write here root of 144 p square. So what is that? 
we can also write this as root of 144 into root of t square. So, uh, 144 is the perfect square, that is a 12. 12, 12 is a 144, and p square means it is going to be p. So, 12 p minus 9, so it is, it is going to be a polynomial. Again, here you can see because all these are positive, so we don't have to. So, this also is a polynomial. Now, look at d part. So, this is a polynomial, but this is not. How I'll tell you. When we separate this one, we write here root of 120 into root of y, y cube. So, this will be same. But here, when we write here root of y cube, means how it can be root of this y raised to 3 by 2. Now, see here. This is y cube and for square root, we put here 1 by 2. If you want to remove the square root, we write here 1 by 2. So this will be 3 into 1 by 2, that is going to be 3 by 2. Because there is a rule in indices, we must have seen. a raised to m into n, that is going to be a raised to mn. So this is to be multiplied, so that is going to be y raised to 3 by 2. So this y raised to 3 by 2, so 3 by 2 has an exponent of what? This is the exponent of it, 3 by 2, which is not an integer. 3 by 2 is not an integer. So therefore, it is not a polynomial. Even one single thing is not a polynomial. So that whole expression is considered that is not a polynomial. So hope you got it. So I put a cross for it. Now same here. This 31x by y and 25. Because can you see in the denominator, we have y and x. So when you take this variable in the numerator, it is going to be negative. So that involves division by a variable. This is the division by a variable. As I told you earlier, I will tell you when the example comes, what do you call by a division by a variable? So this is divided by a variable. So it is not a polynomial. Because when you take this y, it, it will be y raised to minus 1. So that negative part, whenever we have negative exponent, that is not a polynomial. Now this is a, because this root is just for 84 and this is x cubed minus this one. So this is a polynomial. So I put a take over here. So by this one we have completed today's work. Do like and subscribe to my channel so you get a notification of the other parts. Thank you.